Without context engineering, all your LLM and Gen AI work is useless. Pretty bold statement to make, but we've got some facts to back it up. Hi, this is Yulia from the Elastic Community Channel, and let's get into context engineering. This may be a new term in an era where new terms keep popping up around every corner, but it's actually not a new concept. Rather, it's a collection of old concepts and different best practices bundled together into one. When we work with LLMs and Gen AI, one of the biggest fears out there is hallucination, which is a fancy word for saying errors and your model going haywire and giving results that either aren't true or just don't exist at all. Especially if you want to build a system that relies on output from Gen AI, you want this to be accurate and reliable. Now, of course, a lot of this has to do with choosing the right model, and there's a lot of information out there about which type of model is best for you, what should it be trained on, does it have the relevant data and context for your particular field, and as the models get bigger and bigger, we also get more context windows for them. So you might be tempted to think, I'll just chunk more and more information whenever I give a prompt to my model. If the model's big enough, if my context is vast enough as well, surely the right answer will come along. Well, actually, according to research, this isn't always the case. While we've been treating LLMs and Gen AI as this magic lamp that the more data you throw at, magic results will come out, it's actually still engineering. We still need to set up the right architecture, we still need to set up the right practices, we need to be aware of garbage in, garbage out, and really look at how we tailor each command. And that's where context engineering comes in. It has the word engineering in there to really signify that we're taking this Wild West scenario back to something that we understand and that we can make and build reliably. Let's get started at the beginning. When you interact with a large language model, the first thing you do is you put in a prompt. This is the text that you send waiting for a result to come back. Now, in a lot of cases, like perhaps using a chatbot, you might not give a lot of thought to your prompt. You just ask a question. However, if you've worked with anything more complex than that, you know that these prompts can get quite quite in-depth. For example, we can have a simple query like, is there a flight to Stockholm tomorrow? We can add more information to this prompt. For example, telling the agent, you are a travel assistant. You should use several websites to check for flight data. Perhaps you should use a private repository that I've created with flight information. Use everything you find in there and then give an answer. You can be polite. Perhaps you want the agent to be a little funny. Perhaps you want the agent to give the results back in a certain format, starting with dear sir, madam, and giving the flight information. Maybe you want the flight information to come in a table. Maybe you want them to automatically book a flight for you or send an email. All of this can be defined in the prompt. Now, you may have noticed I said something interesting there as well. Looking at data in a private repository. Rather than just browsing on the internet, your agent might also be able to look at data that you've set apart for it. If we have different data sources available, such as an Elasticsearch cluster with flight information that we've stored, perhaps you have access to a private plane where the flight information isn't publicly available, but you have a document with the times for the next flights. If you want your agent to be able to leverage this information as well, there are certain ways to go about it. We can perform RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation, where we first perform a semantic search query, gather the data from all these different sources, and give that as a context to your LLM. This ensures that you can also use private data without having to put it online. This ensures that you can direct your agent to the specific type of data it should take into account, and you can get more accurate results. On the other hand, you can give your agent a tool that makes him capable of searching for this data itself. So rather than getting the information and adding it to the context and the prompt, you can use it later in the pipeline where the model independently can look at different data sources or knowledge bases that you've set up for it. You can also use tools to call out to different APIs and get this data in real time as you make that request. All of these processes, part of context engineering, can enhance the result of your query. And furthermore, we can look at the agent's memory. You can consider the previous data set examples as a long-term memory that you can set up for your model to be able to use whenever needed, but we can also look at short-term memory. This might be the chat history. Perhaps yesterday you already mentioned you want to go to a certain city. So when you ask for what was the flight time again, the model should be able to understand that you're referring to a previous conversation and not just starting something completely from zero. So you want your agent to be able to point back to previous conversation with the same user or perhaps even with 
different users. We have an agent that's deployed across the organization and different people ask or give information about an HR policy or something to do with the company-wide travel. Maybe all that memory needs to be leveraged and used by one agent or if you have a multiple agent setup, these agents should be able to communicate and you can define which part of the short-term memory is shared, which part of the memory should not be discussed amongst them. So you have GDPR and privacy concerns. All of this is once again part of context engineering. You need to think about what your model has access to, what can improve the performance, but what needs to be taken into account for privacy and security concerns as well. You also want to make sure that none of this information can be read by an outsider without the right permissions. You want to make sure that there's no proneness to attack or information getting stolen. You want your agents to be useful, but you mostly and firstly want them to be reliable and safe to use. And finally, while all of that has been set up, you get the result back from the agent. Now, you don't want to just rely on the agent to decide how they should come up. You want to define that as well. As we've mentioned in the prompt all the way in the beginning of this process, you can request that the results come back in a certain way. You can also put this as part of the agent architecture that you're building to define exactly the format that the results should come back in. Perhaps it's text for most Gen AI models, but you may also want it to come back in a JSON format or a dictionary so that this can be further used by other systems and integrated with other agents or other software applications. Standardizing this is very important for building reliable software applications. And if you use the same architecture or, for example, an MCP standard, more agents will be able to communicate together or you can use different agents from a public marketplace or from different tools without having to put all the glue together to make sure they can interact. If everything is standardized, this will be a lot easier to expand and build upon in the future. So to summarize, context engineering is a very, very important aspect of designing Gen AI solutions. It basically defines the best practices that we need to look at throughout the model's life cycle. Think of MLOps for machine learning or just engineering for different software products before this. We need to take a look at how the model communicates, what standards are being put in place, what data is made available and through which protocols. We want to look at what's added to the context to not overwhelm the model but provide enough information, what tooling is made available and how this is defined with special account for privacy and security concerns. We want to look at how the model responds and how this can further be used in other applications. No Gen AI solution exists in a vacuum and taking a look at these practices can really make this more reliable and robust and future proof. Don't just make a toy, make a production ready Gen AI tool. Hope you found this video useful and please check out the other videos on our community channel. We made an entire series about LLM, RAG, MCP and so forth. So make sure to check that out. We'll see you in the next video.